Hi, I'm Jim Jones. I'm the state's Medicaid director, and I want to thank you all for participating in this session today. Just about a month ago, people across the country acknowledged the 30th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act. It reminded me, and I'm sure all of you as well, of how much progress we've made in removing barriers, restrictions, and limitations that in the past prevented people with disabilities and older adults from living as independently as possible and in the way they want, and also preventing them from being able to participate as full members of their communities and from being able to enjoy the rights and responsibilities of citizenships. At the same time, the ADA's 30th anniversary reminded us all that there's still a lot of work to be done to continue to advance the rights of older people and people with disability, including eliminating barriers and obstacles that still make it difficult for people with disabilities and older adults to participate in one of our most fundamental civic rights and responsibilities, the right to vote. You know that holding a major election during a pandemic has created some really unique challenges. Because so many people with disabilities and older adults are at a much greater risk for COVID-19, they may need guidance and support on how to vote safely, and also to understand all the options they might have, such as absentee voting, early voting, in-person voting, as well as any accommodations they might need for their disability. Voting is now a public health issue as well as a civic responsibility and right. With so many family care, family care partnership, IRIS and SSI members isolated and with limited mobility, family care MCOs, IRIS consulting agencies, SSI managed care HMOs and their teams, as well as other service providers and advocacy organizations are trusted points of contact for people with disabilities and older adults. Residents of long-term care facilities have the same right to vote as any other citizen. In the absence of special voting deputies, long-term care facility staff have a responsibility to assist residents in exercising their right to vote. Today, you'll hear from a self-advocate and from speakers from the Wisconsin Disability Vote Coalition and the Wisconsin Elections Commission about how you and your teams can help to improve access to voting along with other essential basic needs such as personal care, medication, access to health care, food, and more. I wanna thank you all for doing this important work. A special thank you to the Wisconsin Disability Vote Coalition and iCare for organizing this event and helping to raise awareness about this important issue. And finally, a big thank you to the Wisconsin Disability Vote Coalition for their work to develop educational resources and training for voters with disabilities, older adults, and service providers. The Department of Health Services is pleased to partner with all of you to share these resources and ensure that voters with disabilities and older adults are able to fully and safely participate in the November elections. Thank you all. Have a great day.